All right, good, we're recording. So I already did the first one. So here's the sleeve. This is what the placket looks like. You guys have seen plackets before. I mean, you guys have seen plackets before. You just now you get ready to make one. Okay. And this is what the piece looks like. The pattern piece is here. So, and what I, when you're doing the, the sleeve, what I want to remind you of is if your fabrics look the same on both sides, this is imperative that you recognize which is the wrong side of each fabric. Take that chalk and write on it and make sure you know which is the wrong and which is the right side. This notch right here, this notch right here is really helpful. Make sure that doesn't go away because it's really helpful with your orientation of you know which side you're gonna be on, okay? Um, let me get my... All right, so here's the pattern piece for the placket. I've already pinned it on here. Here's the pattern piece for the placket and there's marks here. And I took my pen and I punched through and I made the marks here. This is the stitching line. All right, this is the fold. You need all of these marks. So even if you have to overdo it and mark them on both sides of this thing, particularly if your pen goes away, you're gonna need all of these marks. So here's the four dots, here's the stitching line, and I've even drawn these in on the piece. Here's the fold line, I'm gonna use that, and here's a stitching line, okay? So this is what mine looks like. Here's the, stitch, the uh, stitching line with the four dots. Here's my fold line. I use that. Okay, here's my stitching line. And then on your sleeve, On your sleeve, here's the four marks here on the sleeve and here are the pleats, okay? So the pleats are a solid line and a dash line. What I typically do, I'll make a long line and a short line, a long line and a short line, okay? So here are your four marks for on the sleeve and here are the four marks on the, the placket, okay? And let's read the pattern together so that you can understand, because if you keep making shirts, you're gonna always keep making plackets and I want you to get good at it, okay? It's just fiddly instructions, okay? First thing you're gonna do is pin the right side of the placket to the wrong side of the sleeve. This is the wrong side of my sleeve, okay? And this is the right side of my placket. All right, so I'm just gonna line it up and you've got these marks on here. So just look and make sure you've got them lined up. Just fold it over and look. Okay. And then pin right side to wrong side of sleeve, matching the small dots like we just did. Stitch along the stitching lines on the placket. Here's our stitching lines. I'm just gonna pin this And then I'm gonna stitch along the stitching lines at the machine. I only matched up my plaids when I cut my original cutting and my back tab. I did do that. I did do that on purpose. Let's see, where is it? I matched up on my back tab. 
So I know I'm making this for my brother and he doesn't care, but my mother will always be looking at his clothes and she'll be the one that cares. <laughs> she'll be the one that says something. Well, you could have done better right here. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, I've stitched, I'm recording again. Um, I've stitched the, the placket and a stitch along the stitching line. Okay. And now this is where everybody gets scared. Slash between stitching, clipping diagonal to small dies at upper edge. That's where everyone gets scared. Like, oh, I got a cut. Yep, cut right down the middle. Okay, so I clip right down the middle, but let me see if I can show you, but I clip like right to the corners. You stop at a point and then you clip to the corners and get as close as you can. Now, here's a tip. I. I do some back stitches here, here, and across the top just to give it some more strength because you are clipping very close. For it to be really smooth, you're gonna clip close. Now, I'll tell you, down the road, you're not gonna be able to see any of this, okay? So if you if it's not perfect, and guys, get, get out of your head that you gotta have stuff perfect if you've never done it before, really. Just learn how to do it and perfect it as you go based on, you know, your, your skill, you're, you're fine. It's just sewing. This won't even be seen. So do your best. Okay. And then sometimes instead of going to the um, ironing board, I'll finger press. I'll just, you know, open up my seams and finger press just to give it some smoothness and everything. Okay. So our next step is turn the placket and clip corners to outside pressing seams toward placket. So we're gonna turn the shirt over, pull everything to the other side, the whole placket. And again, I'm finger pressing. I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to the ironing board, <clears throat> but you just wanna get it right and make sure, and you're testing, you're testing for your vision to make sure you did it right. That's what you're doing also. So turn it over, look at it, and again, look at the picture and see if it, it looks the same. This shirt happens to have a bunch of pictures for every little step, which is pretty cool. So, but just look at it and make sure it's what you want. Okay. Now the instructions say, now I didn't pink my edges. I didn't cut my edges with pinking shears. So they're raveling a little, but I'm, I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so the next step, press under a quarter inch of the long edge of narrow half, okay? And I know that's where people get confused with language. The long edge of the narrow half. This is why this is narrow. That's just what the pattern means, okay? Narrow half of the placket. So I'm gonna turn this in a quarter inch on this side. And then I'm gonna fold it over the seam just to encase it and it's closed up. Okay, let's do that again. I'm just gonna close up this side and I like going back to, this is the one you're doing right here, this side here. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. This is the narrow half of the placket, the side here. Fold it inside a quarter inch and then fold it down onto the seam so you can close it up and from, from tip to bottom. Just press it with your fingers. T, this will be easy for your fabric because it's denim. Denim does whatever you tell it to do, whether you're using your fingers or your um, the iron. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm jealous you making a denim shirt. You really should have told me that yesterday. Yeah. 
what I got in the store. I'm teasing you. It's like, I'm, I'm really jealous you're making a denim shirt. <laughs> When I went online yesterday, they said that they were out of stock. Walmart oh, said that they had them in stock. I go to Walmart first, get there, they're not in stock. And I go to Joanne's and they had it. Not only did they have it, they had like three of them. And they were on sale, so. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is our next, this is our next step. Okay, and now I'm going to stitch right along this edge. Okay, I'm going to stitch right along this edge here. So when you're stitching, just take one part at a time, just focus on that one part. So what I did, I went to the machine and I stitched this. I stitched it down, okay? So there it is, and that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. So you've done that part. And then we're going to uh, tackle the, the, the top part. Press under one quarter inch on the long edge of the narrow half. Okay, we did that, sorry. <laughs> Press under one quarter inch on the upper end and long edge of large half of placket. Fold large half of placket along the fall line. That's a lot. Let me show you what we're going to do. All right, so we did this part already. All right, it's fine. And it should be smooth like this because if you just turned it and, and turned it over and stitched it down, it should be smooth. Now, remember, you've got a fold line right here and you got a stitching line. All right, let's kind of put that on this side so you can. And I do go through the trouble of remarking on the other side, especially if I have an invisible pin. All right, so look, get your fold, fold going. Turn it on the fold line. And this is where it's gonna be. See, you can test it and you can see where your fold is gonna be. And the, the top part of the placket does lay on top of the narrow part of the placket. All right, so here's my quarter inch. Just finger press it, or you can do it at that ironing board. It's fine, depending on your fabric. And just lay it down on its own seam on that side. Okay, now I haven't dealt with the points yet. Don't worry about it just yet. Just Let's just make sure that we're gonna fold it on the fold line. Take the quarter inch of the edges and, fold, and here's that seam. You just wanna fold the placket down on that seam. Here's my stitching line, because I'm gonna stitch across there. I'm gonna stitch all around the edges and across that top. Now the fiddly part will be turning down that top edge. So here's the top corner, that pointed edge. We wanna turn down a quarter inch here. See, I've got strings. Turn on that quarter inch here. Okay, and you can press it if you need to. If your fabric doesn't want to cooperate with finger pressing, you can press it down. You can take it to the ironing board. Then we'll go ahead and pin my quarter inch on the long edge. Okay, I haven't attached anything. This is still by itself. I'm just dealing with the wide part of the placket. And just getting all these lines folded and straight and everything, guys, it's just practice. That's all it is. I'm not doing anything, you know. One time I had a student call it sorcery that I was doing. 
She said, what is this sorcery you do? I'm like, it's not sorcery. I promise. It's just practice. <laughs> just get it right. That's all. Just, just practice. I always uh, use the analogy. Remember you learned how to drive? Your dad taught you and he taught you all the best practices. Do it this way. Keep your hands at 10 and two. Do it this way. Don't only use one foot. All of those things you have to remember, but you practiced and got it right by yourself eventually. Now you jump in the car and teaching other people to drive. Right. But you had to practice. You had to get in a car with others. You had to get in a car by yourself. Hell, you had to take a test. <laughs> you don't have to take a test in sewing. <laughs> you just got to keep practicing. That is true. Okay, so this point is giving me a little fit, but that's okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to get it right. Almost. Okay. Wait a minute. There it is. Got it. Got it. See, it even takes me a minute. All right. Hold on. Let me go to the iron board and just lay it down on here. You guys with flannel, it will stretch. So be careful when you're pressing. Up, down motions only, not a whole lot of movement. Okay, so here's my placket. It's pinned down. Here's the two points at the top and here's the edge that I'm gonna stitch. Now I do want to, let me show you this and I'm gonna show you where the pattern does not say this. See, here's the other one. All right, here's it pinned before I stitch it. Here's what it looks like when I get it stitched. Even the stitching line across the top, which covers up this other side so that it's all secure, right? What it, the pattern does not say how to stitch this other edge. And it's just a top stitching. That's all it is. It's just a top stitching, but it does not say it. And let me show you. This is where patterns get very unclear. Okay, turn the overlap back in place, face the upper edge of the overlap. We just did that with pins, okay? Stitch close to the basted edges and along the stitching line. Here, here, that's it, okay? Even on the picture, do you see any stitches? Do you see any stitches on that open edge? Mm -mm. Nope, let me tell you when you see them. No. Right here. Look at that. You see that right. the stitches on the open edge. Okay. Yeah. It never tells you oh. when or how to stitch on the open edge. So I want you to do it. I, I just want you to, after you stitch this down, okay, I want you to take that open edge, put it in your machine okay. and top stitch it all the way up to the top. Okay. Ignoring this, like just pull it back and top stitch this edge up to the top. And then I want you to lay it down and do your top, your stitch across here and you are done. Okay. So here's the narrow half of the placket. Here's the wide half of the placket. It's folded over on its seam. I've got it pinned so you know my quarter inch seams are laying down and I'm going to top stitch here. I'm going to top stitch on the right edge so that it lays down on its seam and then top stitch on the, the top and then I'm going to separate it and top stitch right here so it can be really neat and look like that. Okay. What questions we have? 
Well, I have a couple of questions, Nikki, but it doesn't pertain to that. It pertains to the pattern pieces. Okay, hold on a second. I'm gonna finish this because we're okay. recording. Sounds and good. then we'll come back, okay? okay? All right. All right, any questions about the placket? This would be helpful for people who see it later. <laughs> uh -uh. Okay, Brent, you good? I'm good. I usually run into the questions once I start. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm still well. I'm still available. So okay. So let me go to the machine and get this done. And then my next step is the cuff and how to put that on. And I'll be working on that while we're, um, you know, during okay. class. So like I was saying about um, stitching down on the outside, what I've done, I stitched down over the seam, the wide part of the placket. I stitched the top corner. Okay, and I stopped right there because I want to top stitch this here. Okay, the opening, I want to top stitch that to give it a nice look. This is one of the steps that the pattern does not show. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, this is the wide part of the placket and I want to top stitch on the left side. So I'm just going to put it in the machine right here. Well, put it in that way, put it in the machine right here and go all the way to that edge. And then I'm gonna lay it down and stitch across and I'll be finished. And the next step is to do your pleats. And here are my pleat lines here. So I'm taking, I'm gonna transfer them onto the other side. Transfer my lines rather, okay? Because I'm gonna take the long line and put it to the short line. Okay, here are my pleat lines. And to make soft pleats, soft pleats means the pleats are just turned and basted. They're not stitched down. Fold along solid lines, bring the folds to the broken lines. So here's my solid line. Just gonna pick it up and turn it over and put it on the short line. Pick up the long line, turn it over and put it down on the short line. And I'm just gonna um, stay stitch it across, across here and you're done, okay? That's a soft pleat. If it was any other pleat, it would tell you to stitch down. And that's not what we're doing. It's just a shirt, it's a men's shirt and men's garments don't have those kind of pleats. So I'm gonna stitch across here and we're done putting the sleeve together. And our next step is the cuff. So now that we got the sleeve done with the placket and the pleats, it's time to put the cuff on. All right, so what I've done just to, so to summarize, I put the sleeve on the shirt Okay, just lay out the shirt and you stitch it on. And what I did, I top stitched. Okay, that's how you design as, you, as you're putting your garment together. All right, so and then I'm gonna stitch the sleeve together. So stitch it together, down the sleeve, down the side of the shirt, side seam. Okay, sleeve and side seam. Stitch it together. You've got notches, make sure they match up. Okay, and after you stitch that, we're gonna put the cuff together. Now I'm doing a contrast on the inside. So here's my outer fabric and here's my inside piece. And you're gonna put these two pieces together. All right, according to the pattern instructions on your contrast piece, which is gonna be the inside of the cuff, hold it down. Hold it down five eighths inch because that's your seam allowance that you're going to put on the shirt. And then you're going to stitch here, here, and here. Stitch on three sides, putting it together. And this is the piece that you're going to put on, on the shirt. Okay? Because just remember, your contrast piece is on the inside. If you're not doing a contrast piece, the piece that you fold down is going to be on the inside of the cuff. Okay, because I've already stitched the, the sleeve together and here's the cuff. I turned it over. I haven't top stitched yet. 
I haven't top stitched it yet. I just turned it over and pressed it. So, and this is the reason why you turn the, the cuff over before you stitch it so that you've got your 5A seam allowance exposed that's gonna be stitched onto the shirt. And then you've got one notch here that's really important because the cuffs only go on once on one direction. So line up here, let's get our pins. Just line up the edges and line up your notch. And then take your cuff around. This is how you pin balanced so that you can make sure your piece fits. This is how it's supposed to fit. So pin the edges and pin the notch and then ease in the rest. Just make sure you get it all. And on the pattern, if you wanna make sure you get good easing and you can do your double gathering stitch. But flannel is really pliable and you can, um, it will ease in nicely. But do not worry, your cuff should fit the edge of the sleeve. Okay, and if you wanna test it, turn it over, look at it and see the contrast on the inside and here's. So I always, if I pin, if I pin it and I really wanna look at it to make sure I got it before I stitch, just turn it over and test it and look at it and make sure it's what you want. Here's my contrast, here's my regular fabric. All right, let's stitch the cuff on and we'll be done with the sleeve. Here we are with our cuff on the sleeve. So here is a tip. We've got to start top stitching and we're going to stop stitch on the outside, right? So this is how I do waistbands on jeans. You've turned down the, the cuff on the inside. Let me just open this up so you can see. Here's your seam, the seam that you stitched in, okay? And you're going to turn it up to turn down Remember you pre-folded this, so it'd be exact, exact measurement. And here's a tip to get your top stitching right so that you can catch this. You're gonna to top stitch on this side so you can catch your inside layer. Pin right at that point where you want that stitch to, to be and make sure it shows up here, okay. And what I usually do, I pin right there at the edge and make sure I can see my pins on the other side. This is gonna be my top stitch line, okay? And watch what I do. Okay, I'm gonna mark it. All right, so here's my line where all the pins are. And then I'm just gonna draw a line and pull the pins out as I go, okay? And draw a line and make sure I stay on that pin line. And then I'm certain because the pins are pinned to the inside layer and I'm certain that I'm gonna catch it and I won't have anything. So wish me luck. We're gonna go to the machine and do that. But that is my tip for making sure that when you're top stitching, you're catching your inside layer also. Leave the pins in, make the line. If you have to draw a line like in between to help you do that, but it's uh, pretty foolproof if you focus and go slowly. So here's what it should look like. Um, I top stitched around the sleeve, the whole area of the sleeve. And I did, I was able to catch the inside with the pins. 
And now you're done with the sleeve. And don't forget on your pattern, you can mark your buttonhole right here, or you can try it on and, you know, measure your buttonholes and where you want them. Uh, we also, you know, talked uh, about a button here so that you could, wouldn't have all the gaping or when you decided to turn it up, you know, to show your contrast, you would still have it connected here. So our, now that we got sleeves done, our next step is the front band. So we can finish up. We're gonna put the front band on and then put the collar on and we'll be done. <laughs>